All right, uh, so now we're going to talk about A-stability in the context of multi-step methods. And um, so one immediate uh, concern in type one has to think about with multi-step methods, of course, is that you need um, to specify the initial data Okay, and, and that's not something which just comes from the, um, from the sort of initial value problem formulation. You have to construct that initial data. Um, and so you can ask, well, what does it really mean? It's like for a multi-step method to be stable because, you know, it's like in the case with a one-step method, all you're basically saying is that when you apply the method to the model problem with the initial data which is given, uh, and if the model problem it's like has a decaying solution, then you want, uh, you know, your linear model problem has a decaying solution, then you want your one-step method to have a decaying solution as well, okay? But now, because of the fact that the multi-step method also depends on all these uh, initial values, it's like which go beyond just uh, the value at, uh, at the time t0, um, you know, what does it really mean? It's like uh, for a multi-step method uh, to be stable then. Um, and, and what um, we are going to basically say is that um, we want it to be stable for basically all possible uh, initial data. Uh, and the reason for this uh, rather pessimistic point of view is basically that, um, you know, even if you have a situation where, you know, for the right initial data, it's like things behave well, the reality, of course, is that this initial data is constructed. It's like using some sort of, uh, you know, finite precision arithmetic. Uh, and so there's always the possibility of round-off error. And so it's, uh, you know, important to be a little bit pessimistic in the situation and really require that uh, the method is stable for basically all initial starting values. So the remark is that we want uh, the multi-step method to have sort of a decaying solution all initial data so long as the continuous problem, continuous model problem has a decaying solution. That's basically uh, our notion of stability, if you will. Okay, so, so let's uh, remind ourselves of uh, what the general form of a linear multi-step method is, right? So you have something which looks like the form sum from m equals zero to s of a m y n plus m is equal to h times the sum from m equals to zero to s of b m f evaluated at uh, y n plus m, uh, t n plus m, right? So that's the general form of a uh, linear multi-step method, okay? And then we want to apply this to our model linear differential equation, which is uh, y dot is equal to lambda y, okay? And so what you end up getting is sum from m equals zero to s a m y n plus m is equal to h lambda sum from m equals to zero to s of b m uh, y n plus m. Okay, all right, so of course it's like you can collect all these terms, so this gives you basically the following uh, linear uh, homogeneous uh, differential or well, difference equation, right? So this is a m minus h lambda b m y n plus m is equal to zero. And if you recall, it's like when we discussed um, the general solution theory for linear constant coefficient difference equations, right? What you want to do is you want to look at the characteristic polynomial, uh, which has these as coefficients, okay? So, um, so you have a characteristic polynomial Um, which is given as follows. Let's write this as W, right? Where 
which is um, basically um, maybe I should put it as Z okay so Z and W okay uh, and usually of course uh, you know in all our stability analysis we should always thought of H times lambda as some point Z in the complex plane okay so what this is then is the sum from m equals to zero to s with this coefficient right so am minus z bm uh, and then uh, w to the mth power okay so that's basically our characteristic polynomial uh, and uh, um, so let me sort of just write um, let me briefly remind you of the solution theory so more or less it's like if you recall it's like uh, you know if you have um, if you fix h and lambda, it's like then this becomes a constant coefficient linear uh, homogeneous uh, sort of uh, difference equation, right? And then the solution theory of this is related to the roots of these uh, characteristic polynomials. Um, and uh, more or less, it's like if lambda is a root, it's like then uh, one of the solution sequences is something like lambda to the zero, lambda to the one, lambda squared, lambda cubed, and so on. Okay, and then if there's multiplicity, it's like then there's a uh, sort of a linear growth term. It's like, uh, uh, there's, well, it's not a linear term, but it's a secular growth term. It's like which uh, gets included. So let me sort of say, uh, let me sort of briefly remind you at least of the solution theory for uh, linear constant coefficient uh, difference equations. Um, and then we can sort of uh, say something about um, what happens, how that implies something about the A-stability of multi-step methods. Okay, so if you have a characteristic polynomial of this form, uh, let's say sum from m equals zero to s of gm w to the m, right, with roots, let's say w1 to wq and uh, multiplicities Um, k1 to kq, then uh, the general solution has the form. It's given by uh, xn is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to q, right? The sum from j equals to 0 to ki minus 1. Okay. All right, C I J uh, N to the J, and then W I N. Okay. All right. So, so the point is that if there's no multiplicity at all, it's like then the solutions just look like if. So again, if lambda was a uh, sort of root of the characteristic polynomial, then the uh, solutions look like again something like you know one lambda lambda squared lambda cubed uh, lambda to the fourth and so on. Uh, if there's multiplicity, then there's this factor uh, n to the j, where it, which basically depends on which term you are. It's like in the um, in the index, um, and it's uh, analogous, if you will, to what you see with uh, differential equations, where instead of just having e to the lambda t, it's like as a solution if, uh, of a linear constant coefficient differential equation, right? If there was multiplicity, you would have something like t e to the lambda t t squared e to the lambda t. And instead of t, it's like you have the n to the appropriate power term here, right? And uh, j is uh, the, going to tell you how, you know, the j is higher, it's like the more multiplicity you have of that particular root, okay? All right, uh, so in any case, uh, so that's sort of a, just a very quick review of the general solution of uh, a linear constant coefficient difference equation, right? And, and there's a lecture uh, which discusses that, uh, which we had before. Okay, so in any case, let me now then state the lemma. It's like which tells you something about a stability of multi-step methods. So the lemma is as follows, right? So let us suppose that the zeros sort of as a function of uh, W of the following uh, characteristic polynomial, right, which is the sum from M equals to zero to S 
of AM minus BMZ W to the M, right, where Z is a complex number, right, R, say W1 of Z all the way up to WQZ of Z. So here you have to, uh, you know, consider the possibility that the number of distinct roots depends uh, on Z, which is of course quite a possibility because this is just a coefficient, right? This is a Z-dependent coefficient, if you will, okay, with multiplicities K1 of Z to uh, K QZ of Z. Okay, right, then uh, the sort of multi-step method is A stable if and only if, okay, the modulus of the WIs of Z well, is strictly less than one, right, uh, and this is true for I equals to one all the way up to QZ, right, for every uh, Z in the negative uh, sort of sort of the complex half plane, if you will. Okay, um, so that's the statement, and then let me sort of briefly try to prove this. Uh, okay, so let's try to prove this. Okay, so. So as you could, well, I just erased it, but if you could see from, if you recall, it's like the general form of the solution of um, a linear constant coefficient difference equation, right? The behavior, it's like of the solution depends on, you know, it's like this uh, sort of the modulus, if you will, it's like of the root of the, uh, the characteristic polynomial. And then there was this sort of, uh, sort of growth term, it's like N to, some power, and the basic idea is that if the modulus of this is less than one, then uh, you are unhurt by the uh, this sort of growth term, the n to the uh, n to the j term, right? So, um, all right. So, so basically, then if uh, well, I should let me say that. So, the solution behavior. is determined by the magnitude of uh, sort of wi as a function of h lambda, right? And this goes from i equals one to uh, q h lambda, right? So if all of these reside in the complex disk, inside the complex disk, then um, their powers decay Uh, than any polynomial, in n, okay, so this implies that y n goes to zero as n goes to infinity, right, which is more or less what you want. Um, if you recall, it's like when we talked about the root condition, it's like for a uh, linear multi-step method, we also, we sort of relaxed the condition and instead of saying that the modulus was strictly less than one, we said it could be less than equal to one, um, but you had to worry about multiplicities. Um, and the reasons uh, why we've imposed a stronger condition basically is because um, whether or not you have multiplicities depends very strongly on sort of the behavior, it's like of, of sort of this coefficient, which now is dependent on where you are in the uh, left 
uh, half plane, if you will. And then that's just really too difficult to check it's like, and worry about. Uh, so we're imposing this uh, slightly stricter condition instead. Okay, so, um, so that's uh, just sort of remark uh, about why um, we're imposing the stricter condition and not worrying too much about um, you know, the root condition, which says that, well, okay, you could have a uh, root which has modulus 1, but it can't, it has to be simple, right? And uh, we're not worrying about that. Okay, so, so this is a sufficient condition for A stability, right? So on the other hand, okay, um, okay. So if on the other hand the modulus of one of the roots is greater than or equal to one, okay, then there exists. Starting values um, such that uh, this coefficient associated with that, which is c10, is not equal to zero. So therefore, it is impossible to say. Well, it's impossible for um, yn to go to zero as n goes to infinity, right? Um, so um, this implies that the condition right, that the modulus of all the roots is strictly less than one is necessary. For a stability. So I guess another way to sort of think about this is that uh, the notion of stability, it's like which we're studying, it's like when we introduced the root condition, is a weaker stability notion than a stability. Uh, and, and that's another reason why, um, you know, it's like this is now both a sufficient and necessary condition for a stability, uh, even though it's not necessarily a sufficient and necessary condition for just stability, right? Okay, so, uh, so let me just stop here for now.